guys, welcome to part two of my cherry adventure here in the Okanagan. Here I am shopping for some apricots in a nearby fruit stall. Um, if you missed part one of me in the cherry orchard, check out this link right here. And uh, yeah, welcome to part two. All right, welcome Gongers, you are in for a treat. I'm back home right now by the barbecue and I'm gonna be using those delicious cherries that I picked earlier today in a cherry barbecue sauce over pork tenderloin skewers. So I had some oil heating in a pan and I've just added one small onion finely chopped. Saute that around and you're like on your way. This is like halfway done, not even kidding. Love cooking outside. All right, the onions are translucent. It's time to put in the star of this sauce, the cherries. So I'm just tossing it around, coating it with those savory onions. Sweet, savory, we love that. I'm gonna give it a saucy texture, you know. These cherries are super in season, so I don't need to add too much sugar, but barbecue sauce, you know, it has that nice, rich, sweet taste. So I like to do maybe three to four tablespoons. Actually, like two tablespoons. <laughs> Next up, tomato paste. Now you might think cherries, tomatoes, that's kind of a weird combination. I totally hear you, but this is a barbecue sauce and the tomato paste is going to give it that barbecue sauce-like texture and consistency. So the cherries have been simmering for 10 minutes. I just took the lid off and whoo, that fragrance from the fruit is absolutely amazing. And I really smell that smoked paprika. Smoky, sweet, tangy. I mean, that's the perfect barbecue sauce, right? Let's mash these up. It's really taking shape. This is gorgeous. OMG, sometimes I impress myself. Okay, oh, let's fix my headband, shit. Shit, that look good. After you mash the cherries, I like to simmer it for another 10 minutes just to really concentrate that cherry flavor. After that, you have a choice. You can either puree it in a food processor or a blender, or you can leave it chunky. I personally like it chunky because I like that texture of the cherry you know what I'm saying? But it's your choice. It's your sauce. It's your choice. All right, I've temporarily changed locations. I am under the gazebo at the moment. I have my pork tenderloin on skewers. I seasoned it with some chopped fresh rosemary. And now I'm just gonna finish the seasoning off with some salt and pepper and olive oil. Super simple. That means grill time. Okay, so pork tenderloin has very little fat in it. It's very tender, but you can easily overcook it. So what you wanna do is you wanna sear it nice and quick so that the middle is like medium well to just done, so it's still juicy. Hey everyone, what are you gonna do with those potatoes in this recipe? I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna do with those potatoes, okay? Because we are really cooking dinner here. I'm gonna have my pork tenderloin with some roasted potatoes. Y'all gonna have it with whatever you want. All right, I'm ready to flip now. I had them on the first side for about eight minutes. I would say check them at six minutes, depending on your grill. Oh, oh, mm. The pork's done, I pulled it off the grill. I would say that the second side took like a minute because most of it cooks when you cook it on the first side. Now I'm gonna reglaze them with our cherry barbecue sauce and we'll be ready to eat. All right, here it is. Pork tenderloin skewers with cherry barbecue sauce. Let's have a taste. Perfection. Tender pork, hint of rosemary, sweet, tangy cherries. What could be better? I'll see you next time on Walking Gong. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. That one less so, but hey. It's kind of like, you know, it's like modeling. You know what I'm saying? You do like 300 shots, and like two of them are good. So, you know, I got like six skewers on, and two of them are good. Mm -hmm. 